Hi there, thank you so much for tuning in to Beauty by Sewn. I'm Kimberly, and if this is your first video or you're just checking it out, would love you to subscribe. I am trying to get to 5,000 followers as my first goal. Um, I'm about 1,500 in, so would love, love, love you to hit that little subscribe button. I wanted to show you, as a pro makeup artist, how I get ready. So my day-to-day -day pretty makeup that I know I look great, I look professional, I can tackle any challenge, whether it's in Manhattan or I am, you know, spending the day with girlfriends, spending the day going to birthday parties with my son, I know that I'm going to look great. So I just have bare face on, I quickly blue dry my hair, and now I'm applying Vitamin Rich Face Base. Vitamin Rich Face Base is awesome because it is a moisturizer that's actually oil free, and it also helps to prime my skin. Big trick that I've been doing a lot lately, especially on women when they have textured skin, is applying my moisturizer with a brush. I find this way it almost like coats it on, and during this northeast, dry, awful, dreary February, I want to help to plump up my skin, but I also need my makeup to last all day. So I find that the shea butter in this formula is great because it helps to hydrate in an oil-free base and it draws uh, moisture to the skin. So I find I'm getting like these 11s more and more from uh, scrunching. And I love to use the brush. I feel honestly like I'm priming or filling in the cracks. So I always also go underneath my jawline and chin because I'm starting to get that gobble gobble, closer to 50. And that way my skin feels hydrated. It feels primed. When I feel my skin, it's got a slip to it. And I always go back, gently press, I go over the edges of my lips. If you've got super dry lips, an awesome must-have product is Extra Lip Tint, and it naturally brings out any pink in your skin. It helps to repair the lips, and it just feels like a bomb. I call this one of those no-mirror lipstick colors to have in your car, in your clutch, at your office. It's a great product. Feels good, looks hydrated, adds a little pretty tint of pink, and it's super easy. So my go-to right now is Bobbi Brown Skin Longwear Weightless Foundation. I'm sure you've seen it all over YouTube, all over the internet, and Bobbi Brown is promoting this foundation huge because it literally is like a veil of color and it works for all skin types. Again, it's oil-free, but this foundation will reflect the finish of whatever you've primed your skin with. So if you have really dry skin, you're looking for long wear, still prime your skin with a super moisturizing, hydrating formula, but then um, lay this foundation on top and you're gonna get that full all day wear coverage. They put the name Weightless in it because I promise you, you put this foundation on, it feels like I'm not even putting anything on my skin, but I get that medium to full coverage and I apply it initially with a foundation brush. This way it's like I'm sort of painting it on. I'm spreading the formula as much as I need to, but I'm not wasting any on my hands. And I go through my brows. I go right under my eye with the formula. It's ophthalmologist tested. Really cool fact too, I found out about uh, skin Longwear Weightless Foundation is it's vegan and gluten-free. Does not mean to eat it, but I am actually doing a gluten-free diet right now, which really, it, you know, it's not a big deal. There's so many gluten-free products out there. So putting on the foundation, spreading it out, and you can see how easy it is. It really spreads itself. Now I go back I always take my hands, they're free, and gently press the foundation into my skin. Don't rub your skin back and forth. And this helps to just make sure that the foundation and your skin are one. Looks super smooth and it feels hydrated. It feels a little tacky almost, 
but I know that that is the foundation and primer working together. And I'd rather have my skin feel a little wet or a little tacky now because for me, I know, you know, in a couple hours, my skin will have soaked up some of the moisture, but I'm still gonna get that awesome long wear. So I'm liking this coverage, especially for every day, because you can see I still have a little bit of pink popping through on the cheeks. It feels great. And my skin looks even. So I also double check always your chest, neck, and face and make sure that they're the same tone. And you can see it all works together. It makes my skin look a little more even. And honestly, it kind of looks like skin, hence the name and the foundation. Feels weightless and I've got that instant coverage. So I wanted to really show to you what I do every day for my makeup. A big go-to product for me are long wear eye products. Again, I'm you know putting my makeup on six, seven in the morning, getting home six, seven at night, if not later. And I'm doing everything from dropping off Jackson at school to then catching the train, doing meetings, going to a fashion show, running up to meet a client, going in store, a couple more meetings, commuting back and forth, you know, running maybe to meet up with somebody, take Jackson to a play date, whatever it is. I just need to not worry about my makeup and I wanna look, you know, I do makeup for a living, so I wanna look polished. Um, and I find as I get older too, when I'm tired, it really shows. So I don't wanna look tired, even if it's three o'clock in the afternoon. So what I'm doing now is something that helps me look less tired. See how I have this discoloration around my eyes? And I find this discoloration becomes more and more prominent as women get older. So by doing a long wear eye base, this is Shore Long Wear Cream Shadow. I just adore this product because I can spread it on with my fingers and I am applying it from my lash line up to my eyebrow. And if you know, I just put on Vitamin Rich Face Base also under my eye. I didn't go for eye cream. I find that when I'm sort of in that mode, quick, hurry, I throw Vitamin Rich Face Base on. As soon as I get out of the shower in the morning, if I'm trying to pull the house together, I do grab for hydrating eye cream. This product is great for under the eye, especially if you have a lot of fine lines under your eye, you're really trying to combat that dehydration in your skin. Another huge product, well, hi, is the serum, Extra Repair Serum. You can see I'm almost gone out of it. I put this on morning and night. And then the Vitamin Rich Face Base I would put on top. And again, I just put all the moisturizers everywhere during the day except my eyelid because you want your eyelid to be that bare skin and that short long wear cream shadow, any long wear products, eye bases, you want them to cling to bare skin. Now, I've got, I've got this sort of primed face, primed eye, so I want to add some definition in. Because I am fair, I don't have a lot of brow, my eyes are sort of not there, I need to add definition in. So I usually go, even before concealer and taking away the tiredness, I go for liner. I love black ink longwear gel liner. If you feel like black is like way too much for you, then try a chocolate or a dark brown. But a huge tip, I was showing so many women last week on an event in Philadelphia area, was how to just even rim the inner waterline of their eyes. So by tilting your head back and applying that color into the waterline, do you see how it naturally adds definition? So if you're afraid of eyeliner and you're like, oh, I don't want it to weigh down my eye, I don't want it to you know, pull, make me look more tired, promise you water lining your eye with an eyeliner, just rimming it will give you instant definition, but still look super pretty and natural. You always want your lash line to be the fullest it can. I don't care what kind of look you're trying to go for. Just try and make your lash line look super full and make it look as dark as you can. But again, don't be afraid to go for a chocolate or an espresso tone. So see, I've got this blip here. I'm like, ugh, but don't worry, because I want to show you as a pro, 
you know, liner isn't one of those things that you get perfect all the time. And what I love to do is take, and I've learned this over the years, is how to double line. So now that I've rimmed my eye, I got this blip. I'm not going to freak out. Yes, I could take a Q-tip and smudge it down a little bit. Ooh, that's a big fluffy Q-tip. I always have a few Q-tips on me. What's great about that gel liner is you do get a little bit of play time. And, you know, if it comes down underneath, don't worry about it. And you get blips and drops, don't worry about it. Just take a Q-tip and smudge it away. That's another reason I find when I'm doing my eye makeup, if I do get blips or blobs, you know, I don't want to wipe away my concealer. So a lot of times I wait till the end because I know what I'm going to do for my corrector concealer. What I have learned over the years is how to fix the smudges. And I have always like a few shadows on me. I even maybe will carry a shadow on me. But what I'm going to do today is I'm just going to take a matte brown color and I'm going to go over the edge along my eye, kind of go over along the edge of my lashes. And you see how I'm tilting my head back and I'm trying to put almost like the chin, my chin on the mirror. That way I can put liner on, keep my eye open. It keeps the skin on my eyelid a little bit more taut too. Cause as I get older, I close my eye, my skin on my eye is a little wrinkly, which is harder to put liner on. But this way, if I just take a powder shadow, tilt my head back and run the shadow along, you can see I've just created a more hazy liner. And then any blips or blobs from my eyeliner that I've done, I can just gently cover up with my powder shadow. What's awesome too is, remember that long wear eye base we put on? Your powder shadows actually will stick to that long wear cream shadow base. So you're gonna get long wear out of your powder shadows too. Powder shadows, you need an eye base too. Don't put powder shadows just on a bare lid. You're not gonna get the color payoff. You're not gonna get the wear out of them. So do yourself a favor, pick up a long wear eye base, pick up a cream shadow. You wanna neutralize the lid and you can also make sure then that your cream shadows are staying all day. So I have just taken the shadows, I've blended it back and forth, and I am putting the color on, tilt my head back. So I even have to remind myself, sometimes I'm like, Kim, tilt your head back, tilt your head back. And you can see that I have applied color. Good, good. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna clean up because I did get a little bit of fallout. So I carry with me, because I do my makeup on the train all the time, and I take a little bit of eye cream on a Q-tip, and I gently go against the skin with the Q-tip with a little bit of that eye cream, and it picks up any of the fallout. And what happens too, I don't know if it's because as I'm getting older or I have put a lot of product in my waterline, I get product that goes into the inner room. Do you see that? And I find I'll work with it because again, I, as a working mom and keeping makeup what it is, which should be fun and simple for our everyday lives and enhance our beauty versus making it feel like it's something else you have to do or complicated. I've sort of learned all these tips over the years in looking polished, but keeping it real and natural um, I just let whatever fallout comes down into my waterline stay there. If you super hate it or you have really deep set eyes and you don't like it, feel free. Just take a Q-tip and wipe it out, but I just keep it there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go for mascara and I'm not looking at you because I am looking for my mascara. I go for eye opening mascara. Eye opening mascara is an awesome all-in-one va va -voom. And what's so cool about this formula is it has a curling agent in it. So I don't even have to have an eyelash curler on me or when I'm doing my makeup for every day, I can just throw this mascara on. It's gonna curl my lashes for me. It's super black too, which is awesome because that just further helps to define and open up my eyes. I have been using a lash grower because I find, and I take biotin 
as well. Biotin's been, I think, a big help in helping my lashes come back or be the best they can be. There, so I've done a couple coats and then I'm gonna go back and apply more mascara right at the root of the lash. One of my biggest tips is remember that your eye has three sides. So I'm getting the mascara right to the root. I'm getting the mascara into the inner corner. I flip the brush around and then I'm coming into the center and I really jam that mascara wand right to the root of the lash and then zigzag the mascara up. Jam it up and zigzag. Jam it up and zigzag. Jam it and zigzag. Look at that, super pretty. And define, woo, it kind of makes me feel like you got an eye lift. So if you get a little blip, you've got super long lashes, I'll just take my finger and blend. You can always take an eyeshadow and blend up there, but I just really wanted to show you how to keep my eyes as sort of naturally defined as I do. Noticing one eye seems a little darker than the other. Do you see that? This side is darker, so I'm just gonna go back in with some shadow and amp up the color on my right eye. And let me show you a little thing maybe I will do, is I'm gonna take the shadow and I'm gonna grab another brush and just gently blend out the crease, the color that I did along the liner, along the top half, just so it's just softened a little bit and a little bit more hazy. So I'm gonna just take the blank eyeshadow brush and just blend it. And do you see how I'm pulling my eye just gently so that I get a taut surface that I can blend on? And I always love taking, and again, I don't have any product on this brush, but I'm taking my eyeshadow brush and just with my eye open, blending it, the crease. And I don't know if that's like a little bit of the emperor's clothing, which isn't there. Um, but I just find that way I know it's blended, it's diffused, and it's super pretty. So what we're gonna do now is we want to further define, and you can see, you know, I'm tired and you can see it. And so many women say, oh, I'm older, I don't wanna wear concealer, I don't need concealer. Yeah, you do, <laughs> promise, you need concealer. So I am right now looking for my concealer brush um, because my darkness is so dark under my eyes. If I just go and put a concealer on top, it's gonna look yellowy green. So I'm gonna go for a corrector and I'm gonna use a color called Peach Bisque and I'll show you what happens. What you do with your corrector is you put it where you see dark. Don't put your corrector all over your under eye. Put it just where you see darkness. And for most people, it's right in that inner corner and usually down along the socket of the under eye. I, thanks to my Italian father, um, have a lot of darkness under my whole eye. So I, in fact, ended up putting it over my whole under eye. And then I'm gonna just take the corrector and use your ring finger. It is the most gentle pressure finger on your hand. And again, we always wanna be gentle with our under eye. And then I'm gonna go with my thumb and just gently pull up into that inner corner brightening up that inner corner, especially if you have deeper set eyes, make sure you get that inner corner. Now I'm gonna go back and apply corrector where I need it, which is right into that inner corner and coming <laughs> kind of all the way underneath my eye. I have a lot of red in the underneath my lash line and I'm gonna bring it into that inner corner and then I'm gonna tap. Tap, 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 tap. And you know, I'm doing my makeup sort of far away. I find, again, a lot of women, they get so close up into the mirror and they're like, oh, but look, I can see it settling into this fine line. Really? I mean, if somebody is up this close, <laughs> trust me, they don't care about the under eye concealer creasing. They're looking for something else. So now that I've done a little bit of corrector, I'm going to set my under eye with concealer. 
and I'm obsessed with, this is Bobbi Brown Instant Full Cover Concealer. And a little trick I teach, it's to do a triangle under your eye and bring it, the concealer right underneath. So see how it's like a triangle? And if you bring it down along to the bridge of the nose and out, you're gonna get a really lifted transition of color from your under eye, but then bringing it down to the top of the cheekbone also is one of those natural ways to sort of highlight and contour your features. And right now it's a Saturday and I bet you you're wondering, where is her family? Well, my husband took my son to the birthday party, um, which is from like 11 to one. So I wanted to grab this time to show you how I do my makeup, because I have a quiet house. And we have people coming over later um, and all the rest of it. So I just wanted to take this minute, show you how I do my makeup um, for that, really that polished professional everyday look. There's lots of versions of this makeup, but this is really the basics. And if you can pick up any of these tips with any colors you have at home, you will have a great polished, pretty, pro-looking makeup. So one thing too, I noticed that as I've been getting older, which happens every day, yes, you get older every day, um, I notice my eyes are becoming different shapes. <laughs> and I think it's because I sleep like this, so my whole face, it's like squished up like this. So remember this little smoky eyeliner brush that I used to apply the powder shadow? What I find I do, it's again, I didn't go back with any more product, but I have to sort of almost make the two eye shapes look a little bit more the same. So I then take the shadow on my side and I pull the eye out a little bit to see what the wing of the shadow, so there's no poor product there. And then this eye is sort of my like favorite eye and it is naturally a little bit bigger. So I'll just swoosh a little bit of product there and it just naturally enhance the shape of my eye that's here. And then that way I find that my two eyes <laughs> look a little bit more similar. But do you see that, how this eye looks bigger and this eye is smaller? It's not crazy. It really happens as you get older. So again, I'm gonna pull more shadow down underneath this eye to help this eye look bigger. Craziness. And then make the shadow a little bit thicker on this side. There we go. So then when I look, they still are not a perfect match because they are two different shapes, but I find then that way they look a little bit more even. So now I'm just tapping, tapping, tapping. And I do like to set my makeup. I set my makeup where I'm shiniest with a pressed powder. So I take soft sand pressed powder, which actually, see that kit back there? It's in that kit right now with my face on it. Um, but this is a great color because it works with almost all skin tones. And this is one of those colors that we actually use backstage when we're touching up with models and you have to grab like only two, three powders. We grab soft sand. It really works across such a large range of skin tones. So I put powder where I know I'm gonna get a little shiny and which is through the nose. You want your glow always to be the biggest or the best or the most glowiest on your cheeks. So I will just take a little bit of powder under my eyes. And then in the winter months, I take a little bit of powder under my jawline and it looks smooth. I ran a little bit of powder through my brows. Really, really soft. I'm just using this sheer powder brush. It's super gentle, super easy. So I wanted to find my brows and I wanted to show you a little pro tip. There's these awesome brow kits that Bobbi Brown sells. I'm using the one that is a um, medium color. It has gray and mink in it and gray Yes, because it's almost like a taupey gray color is awesome if you are blonde or silver. It has enough of a cool tone in it so that you won't look, you won't get like a red or orange to your brow, which happens a lot of the times for blondes with fair skin. I love using the eyeliner brush for my eyebrows. I get a really defined application but because it's a synthetic hair, it just slips over my skin 
and I get a perfect shape really easily with these shadows. So I mix the mink and the brown together and I want to bring the shape out as far as I can. Again, I find a good brow as we get older because it's the highest feature on your face. You really want your brow to stand out. See, it gives me like a little eye lift. So again, I'm just taking the brow powders in this brow kit, mix them together, and I'm doing little soft feathery strokes. I'm not rushing through it. I'm just taking my time to press the color um, onto the skin and gently pulling the brush across. I'm going underneath and then flicking the head of the brow hairs so that it's up. So the head of your brow, you want it to be squared off and it will help to make the brow look more natural, defined. You still wanna see texture in your brow. Um, yesterday I actually did a sh uh, show for New York Fashion Week and the brow was super defined and actually had a tint of burgundy in it but you still wanted to see the actual brow hairs. So we literally painted the color on with a really small tight brush. Because even if you want a really defined brow, you don't want them to look like you drew them in. You want to see the brow hairs so that it looks natural, not too fake or ornate. So I've brushed the brow hairs and I'm using a blank mascara wand which is free at most makeup counters. So you could drop by a Bobbi Brown counter and be like, hey, I just watched Kim Sound. She really talked about this free mascara wand. Could you give me one? And I'm sure the girls will give you a mascara wand. But I love a blank mascara wand because I can brush the color through with the brow, you know, the color with my brow hair. And then I get a really defined brow. Um, I'm just looking here underneath. I don't have any brow hairs. I don't know where they go as you get older, um, but you can go back and just fill in where you need to. I find too, doing my makeup from a bit of a distance, and I think I need glasses, really actually is almost a good thing because you see things more objectively. You don't um, get all caught up in the details. It's like when you go to an art gallery, you know, you don't watch, see a painting really close up. They don't let you walk right up. You want to stand back and look at it. And I find as we get older, sometimes I get a little critical of how things are dragging or drooping and pulling back, looking, does, hey, does it look good? Okay, good. Move on. So now I'm just going to quickly finish my skin. And one of my go-to always is pink glow highlighting powder. I'm going to take a big fluffy brush and I put my highlighter on before I put my blush on. This is gonna give me a little bit of a lit from within glow. Helps my skin look like it's glowing versus me wearing highlighter. So it melts into my skin a little bit. It's a pinkish tone as you can see. And I love just dusting a little bit on the bridge of my nose, not on the bulb of my nose. And whatever's left, I don't know, sometimes I just throw it wherever. What I'm gonna do next, because I'm feeling wool, because it's the blahs, I wanted to throw a little bit of bronzer on. So I am going to go for a natural bronzer. And natural is an awesome color if you find when you wear bronzers, they look gray or they look too orange or too red. Natural bronzer is literally a perfect mix of cinnamon it's a perfect mix of browns and a little touch of golden. And I'm putting bronzer through the like perimeter of my face. Oh, look at that. Oh my gosh, bronzer. Whoever says they don't need bronzer, I don't know what they're talking about. But just throwing out, oh my gosh, a little bit of bronzer. I actually feel like, okay, I'm back. And I can throw a little bit of bronzer on my skin. And then to finish, I wanna make sure I'm going for color. So I'm going to top with some blush. Pop, blush on top of that highlighter. Yes, I had that little bit of bronzer on, which is pretty. 
I find too blush helps to bring out the natural color of my lips and now I'm gonna go for a really pretty lip I am obsessed again with lip liner maybe it's because my lips are getting less and less defined I find I love having a lip liner that's the same color as my lips it helps them naturally define and I don't feel um, I don't feel like I'm losing my lips I bring the lip liner right to the outer edge, right to the outer edge, rounding the top, and then press my lips together. Remember I had that extra lip repair on? I'm obsessed too with some Luxe lip color. Mm, so pretty. And this is in the best, oh my gosh, it feels so good. It feels luxurious, it feels Moisturizing, but not goopy, not too greasy. This is Pale Mauve uh, Luxe Lip. There, and I could stop there, but you know what I always do? I just throw a little gloss right into the pout. Why? I don't know, because I love a good gloss. This is Bellini Lip Gloss. You cannot go wrong with Bellini Lip Gloss. Any lip will love some Bellini. And I just tap, <laughs> I don't know why, and I just tap and I tap because it just makes it all look pretty together and I'm ready to go. Hope you found this super helpful. This is my pro everyday basic look. Hope you found some cool tips and if you found a few, please subscribe. Huge hugs. Mwah, mwah. Bye.